Hey, it's Solar Ken, the Energy King here, and I'm making a video on the 10 things I wish I knew before I moved to Houston, 2021, 2022. For the most part, it is February 10th, 2022, and I moved here to Houston as of February 3rd, 2021. So I've been here in Houston for a year and a week. So I have a very, very good firsthand experience on what it is like living in Houston, and I've enjoyed it for the most part, but these are some of the things that I wish I knew. So here are the top 10 things I wish I knew before I moved to Houston. Let's get into the video. So number one on the list is gonna be the wishy-washy weather. And what I mean by that, in Houston, if you haven't been here, or if you haven't heard of it, it can go from hot to cold, from stormy to humid, all in the same day. I'm serious, I'm telling you when I say it literally can rain and be sunny at the same time. I've seen it, I'm on balcony off of, uh, I stay off of Westheimer and basically the Sam Houston or the Beltway and I'm pretty much centrally located and I've seen it rain on the west side of the city but be sunny on the east side. Don't ask me how it works. I just experienced it and I really don't care for it. I'm coming from Phoenix, Arizona where it was usually decent weather for the most part year round besides the, the summer times. But for the most part, here in Houston, it can be summer in the winter and winter in the summer type. I've seen it rain for two or three weeks at one time. So the wishy-washy weather is pretty much something I'm not getting used to. As of February 3rd of last year, I moved here and then the storm hit as of February 15th. So it's almost been one year since the winter storm where it basically froze over and for four days I was without power. So just moving into a home as of last year and it, it, then being without power within a week, that's pretty tough. So definitely be on the lookout if you're interested in moving to Houston. Number two, it literally can rain for a week straight. So after the winter storm last year, what happened, it was from about end of March to about May, it pretty much rained every day. Bruh. I'm telling you, maybe it was a couple days of slight drizzles, but for the most part, it rained every day. It felt like Seattle. It felt like I was really in a monsoon every single day because every time I tried to go outside, it was literally raining or it was start raining and it was kind of hard for me to a to keep it consistent on um, workflow when it came down for me just knocking doors trying to drum up some business in the solar industry but it was it was super wet outside and again they have a flood meter on the side of their west park drive which is one of the tollways here and that meter is real because you would get stuck in a flood if you don't realize how high the water is because it's so much water and it's so saturated and I'm telling you, when it rains, it rains, it, it floods. It pretty much everywhere around the city. Houston is known for their flood zones. So even with me in the solar industry, I have to stay away from certain areas because it takes a little bit longer to get these deals installed because of the flood zone. So you should definitely watch out for that if you decide to move to Houston. And just to touch back on it for number three, it's going to be the flash like freezes because it kind of flash freezes only in January to about February-ish. So around this time of the year, uh, from the beginning of the year to about mid-February or early March, it can pretty much freeze at any given time, only because of weather patterns changing. Maybe it's because of global warming. Who knows? I just know Houston is one of those areas where it can get cold and hot and cold and hot days on end, back and forth. And you just never know what you're gonna get out of a day in Houston during the beginning of the year. So we're gonna move on to number four on the list and we're gonna get into the traffic. Traffic is horrible in Houston, depending on the time of day that you actually leave out. Now mind you, it does clear up depending on, like I said, the area that you live in at about six o'clock, so you should be good. But from about 2.30-ish to about six, you're gonna be stuck in traffic. And in the mornings from about eight to about, I'll say about, eight o'clock for sure, you're gonna be stuck until about nine, depending on the, where you're at. And so it's gonna take you at least 20 to 30 minutes extra to get through this, this uh, these pileups because of the way the roads are. I mean, they, these roads can be backed up 
pretty far back only because there are six lanes and nothing but cars on top of them. And everywhere you go, it's gonna be pretty much a 20 to 30 minute drive anyway. So you just might as well add another 20 to 30 minutes to it. So number five, they run red lights in Houston. <laughs> Trust me when I say pause a little bit before you go through your green light because someone could be running their red light. I've seen it happen many a times at night for sure. Um, Westheimer is the road that I stay on and going towards the Galleria district, going east down Westheimer from, I guess the Sam Houston, you're gonna see that there's a light on every corner. And trust me, people are trying to make it to wherever they're trying to go during on any given evening. It's crazy because it literally happens every time I'm out. Somebody's running a red light and it's not just like a uh, just turn red. It's like, oh, it's a clear red light. It should have, they should have been stopped. There was a yellow yield light that's paused for maybe three seconds and they still went right through it knowing that they were maybe 100 feet away that light. So you got to think about this. You almost guaranteed to get into an accident in Houston because they're going to run a red light. And if you decide to take off a little bit early or you can't take off on time, you could be finding yourself in a heap of trouble knowing that somebody ran a red light on you. And I, I hate to see that happen to anybody. So if you come to Houston, please be mindful of the red lights and they and running those. Thanks. Number six on the list, tollways. Tollways is crazy. This the Sam Houston, I stay right off of it. Um, there's the Fort Bend toll. You have the West Park toll. You have a couple other tolls around the city. For the most, I think it was like 99 or something like that. The, where they also have tollways and you're gonna pay on any given trip anywhere between 50 cents to about $1.75 per toll depending on which tollway you're on. Getting on and off could be something so you might either A, have to ride on a, um, frontage roads or try to stay away from, I guess, the tollways in general if you're not gonna pay for the tolls, but you're gonna run into at least six to seven of those on your trip. That means three there, three back, maybe a little bit more depending on which way you take. I don't know, just to avoid it. You just get into this inner loops and then you don't actually have to pay for the tolls because there really isn't. But when you're driving the outside of the loops or you're trying to get from one side of the city in a reasonable manner without having to go through like this town to actually get from A to B, um, yeah, you're gonna probably get on the toll road and you're probably gonna hit at least three to four tolls for sure going one direction and doing the same thing going coming back. So just be mindful of that. You can just rack up a decent amount of tolls if you decide to go on that route. So number seven on this list is going to be the nightlife. The nightlife is crazy. Literally, you can go get hookah anywhere. And that's what number seven is, is the hookah is literally everywhere. If you don't like hookah, you probably don't want to come to Houston because they all about their hookah out here. They definitely go through the motions of making sure that they're going to serve you all night with the hookah from restaurants to, to um, bars to pretty much everywhere. The lounges, they're all going to have the hookah out raving for you. I even seen hookah at a car wash. That's how you know they hookah is, is real out here. If you can, if you smoke hookah and you choose to do such, you can definitely find it here in Houston. I mean, I've been here with a couple other homies is coming out just to come visit and you'll get hookahed out real quick because everywhere you go to, it's gonna be a hookah spot and all you see is hookah smoke everywhere. So it's like, you just gotta, I guess, embrace it if you come to Houston, just get ready for it. So number eight on the list, right? Is you literally can go out to the clubs, bars, lounges, brunch spots, seven days a week. Bruh. From Monday to Sunday, seven days a week from about 12 p.m. to 7 a.m. No cap. You heard me right. I said no cap. You can literally go out from about 12 p.m. in the afternoon to about 7 a.m. in the morning on any given day. Now, mind you, there's going to be different bars that you're going to be at 10. Not, not, not all of them stay open, obviously, that long, but there's going to be after hour spots after the after hour spots. You can always find somewhere to go to. I don't know why that it is the way it is. Houston parties harder than any other city I have been to. I think they even party harder than Vegas, I don't know. If, you, if you're really about that life, you can really be outside, outside. Definitely, in Houston, no cap, you're gonna be outside, probably messing around in the Galleria District downtown or at one of the local bars that actually stays open to the to later weeder hours in the morning, if you know what I mean. 
those spots are always here and always ready to be available for anybody who comes to Houston, ready to turn up. So number nine on the list is going to be the crime rate. Um, Houston can have a high crime rate. People will talk about Fifth Ward being like one of the most dangerous areas in the city, if not uh, like a higher up on the 75, I wanna say, the uh, interstate going up north basically, North Houston. They, I seen a meme one time that said, when you gotta, you gotta pump gas with your gun out on the north side. And I've been over there and it seems like it might might need to pump gas with your gun out on the north side. Bruh. It can be something totally different. Um, honestly, I, I come from the Midwest, so I kind of understand what it is for the most part. But when it comes down to just like the crime, you definitely wanna make sure you lock your door, making sure that you're always aware of your surroundings, making sure that you know where you're going and who you're going with, making sure that you don't leave anything valuable in your car. That way you're not being at risk or becoming a, a statistic. And when you decide to come to Houston and visit and make sure that when you're parking your cars, you're parking them in lit areas where you can actually get to it safely and know you should definitely make sure that you're not gonna park in a spot where you're gonna get towed because they will tow your car out here for sure. They will tow your Renault, tow your uh, Toro, whatever, whatever you parking, whatever you parking in the spot that you think that you can park in, you better check twice because your car will get towed somewhere else. So those are two things I want to make sure. That's like nine one nine two. Like you want to make sure that you you definitely parking in secure areas and make sure that you're you're covered when it comes down to parking in secure areas that aren't going to get you towed. So for number ten, we're going to get right to it the gun laws. So one thing that you should know in Texas or just in Houston overall, that I assume that everybody holds a pistol or a gun or some type of weapon on them personally, only because we do live in Texas. And as of September 1st of last year, there was a law basically passed that allows you to be uh, concealed. You can conceal carry without, with just your ID. So with that being said, now, since you can conceal carry without uh, having to have a, like a concealed carry license, you're pretty much going to run into anybody and everybody who has a, a ID, a valid ID that can own a gun. So you should probably not just, I guess, go out there free will trying to either start something, interrogate something, or thinking you bigger or better than any particular person. I'm not saying so don't defend yourself. What I'm saying is don't be out here starting something with somebody and you don't know what they're going through or going uh, for at this particular time. And I assume that everybody's prepared to basically act in self-defense if they need to. So just don't come out here thinking that you're the toughest person in the world or try to, I guess, show your tough man card because I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody that decides to visit or he moved or to be a part of this community because at the end of the day, we're better than that as a society. We should be better than that. And let's just make the best of whatever we can. But that was my 10 things that I wish I knew before I moved to Houston. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I love to see them and answer them. If you have any questions on just about areas in Houston that you want to know more about, definitely reach out to me via DM on my social medias. All of those should be in the description below. I would love to help you guys out. But see you guys on the next video.